favorite products from some of our favorite brands get ripped off the shelves all the time. Some are recalled, such as cars, such as food, and yes, such as skincare. Some of them get canceled due to supply chain issues or bad consumer feedback. And some actually get reformulated, basically recreated to make them better or less expensive or more expensive. But why do brands reformulate, especially if they have something that's already good? Why reinvent the wheel? Well, there are actually some secrets that most consumers don't know about. These are things that brands don't want you to know. And there are certain cosmetic chemists, there are manufacturers and formulators that I've spoken to to understand why reformulation happens and what we, as people who purchase these things, should know about it. And yes, we're working with good molecules on a portion of this, but we'll speak about that later. Because when it comes to reformulation, we have to understand what it is. It's pretty simple. You take something, whether it's a product or food, or a medication, and you either redo the ingredients or you redo the amounts, or you can even keep those the same and just redo the process in which you're creating these. There's a lot that goes into creating skincare or creating any product, and it's not just the raw materials and the ingredients that go in, but it's also the formulation, it's the packaging, it's the stability, and it's how these things work together. But when it comes to skincare reformulation or cosmetic reformulation, usually these things are done for specific reasons, such as making skincare work better or making cosmetics look more elegant on the skin, or for some shady brands to cut corners, and for some ethical brands to actually make their products better. Reformulation in skincare is usually taking a product and tweaking an ingredient, or 50. <laughs> well, why exactly does that happen? Well, hello, 2022 news cycle. Who here has been sick of hearing about the supply chain? Do not deprive me of my hot bean juice. My hot bean juice, it's coffee. Get it? Hot bean juice? Because it's hot beans. We've all heard of the supply chain and how the supply chain can impact both products and raw materials. And for skincare, yes, that can actually impact raw material availability or packaging availability. If there is an inconsistent supply of the ingredients or the raw materials that go into a product, obviously that's going to cause long-term problems. Or what happens if one of those manufacturers discontinues one of their key ingredients or a key blend? Let's say that you always go to the grocery store and you buy the exact same brand of vegan cheese every time. Sometimes the store or discontinues that. And the same thing happens behind the scenes in skincare. When brands are formulating, some of them do have their own labs and manufacturers, but some of them purchase raw ingredients from suppliers. And if a supplier discontinues something or reformulates something, or if that supplier just goes out of business, that brand has to innovate. So if there's a new formula on the market or an ingredient that is more stable or penetrates better, these suppliers and manufacturers normally tell their customers because they want their customers to stay with them and they want to create better products and better raw materials materials so that by creating a better product, they get more business. And with that additional revenue, they can stay in business and in production longer. A cosmetic chemist also exposed another reason that a lot of people don't think about, and it's called attention. Yes, brands want attention too. It's really hard to stay relevant in a skincare or beauty industry. It always feels like there's something new or something exciting, and brands have to stay relevant. Think of it like celebrities. What makes a celebrity relevant? The fact that they've been in a scandal or the fact that they're dating someone new or the fact that they did something interesting, that puts them on the front cover of magazines. So for skincare brands, how do they get on the front of shelves? People have to purchase their products, people have to like their products, and they have to do something innovating or interesting that's worthy of speaking about. And sometimes if they have an already amazing product, how are you going to fix perfection, right? Nothing is perfect and it's okay to embrace our flaws. Our flaws are our features. Just saying. But speaking of hypothetical perfection here, it's really hard to fix a perfect product. So what can you do? You can reformulate it. You can make the packaging more eco-friendly. You can tweak something that makes it worthy to speak about. And the chemist who shared this actually wrote an entire blog post on why brands choose to reformulate. And some of his insights, including the attention hypothesis, are very interesting. There's also the case where a brand might want attention from a new type of customer. For example, let's say that you have a three-step acne kit that people shoved down the throats of acne sufferers. Well, let's say that those acne sufferers grew up. Well, that brand no longer has those people to sell to. And if those people already know that brand name, they can reformulate to make something that is for adult acne or adult wrinkles and acne to help those customers and basically target a new customer sector. What a five-year-old wants is very different from what a teenager wants, which is very different from what a college student wants and what a mom or a dad wants and what a geriatric senior would like to have. And brands know this. So 
So by actually creating customer segments or putting customers into groups of what people like or what people struggle with, they can create products that serve that. And if they have one product that is amazing, they can reformulate it and package it differently to serve a different sector of the population. Of course, we gotta talk about the government. There are also laws and regulatory changes. For example, when China stops testing on animals, you bet there's going to be an influx of new products. And you bet there are probably some ingredients or formulations that are used overseas that aren't allowed here. Right now, there are certain products that are sold in America that can't be sold in Canada because some of the things that you and I see as over the counter to someone in Canada, it's considered a prescription grade product or same with the UK and vice versa. There are things in other countries that we can't have access to because they're considered prohibited or restricted. Regulations are super important and specifically the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, really looks at the cosmetic industry and ensures that there's nothing over the counter that's being sold as a cosmeceutical, etc. <coughs> Hello. Ukrainian skincare brands that got ripped off the market for selling steroids in their over-the-counter creams. Yeah, don't think I didn't forget about that lawsuit. Regulation matters and it controls what can happen. And if some of those changes, you bet that formulas have to change too. Sometimes if a brand is too expensive and their raw materials cost too much, even if they have the best formula, some people don't wanna pay $500 for a moisturizer. If that's what it takes to get good skin, that's ridiculous, right? So as raw materials go up, they may cut costs to make things better. But on the flip sides, some brands will actually increase their cost because they're doing well. Think of everyone looking for inexpensive, effective and affordable products during the pandemic. If a good brand makes a lot of sales and therefore a lot of money, they can reinvest that money into creating better products or newer products that serve their customers better. And that can allow them to actually increase the price that they're spending on raw materials to make a better product that sells even better than the last one. Sometimes brands are reformulated because they burn people. Yes, sometimes products are intense. And if the general population uses a product as directed and burns their face off, that's a no-no. You bet that's gonna get reformulated or pulled off the market because that brand does not wanna get sued. But sometimes it's because that product could be better. Maybe that product has an excellent active, but it could work better at a higher percentage without causing irritation. If a brand notices that that's what consumers want, that's what a brand is going to do. And that's actually what Good Molecules did with this discoloration serum. I actually have both version 1.1 and version 2 that I wanted to compare and contrast to actually show you how this works. And one thing about Good Molecules is that they actually have this nothing to hide ingredients list. Again, you can't tell everything from a product just based on the ingredients list. But if you are a skin intellectual or if you are curious, this is a fun way to exercise that curiosity. It's a great way to understand a little bit more about skincare. And if you're ever interested in cosmetic chemistry, it's an interesting way to see how these things happen behind the scenes because not all brands disclose what version they're actually selling. Not all brands disclose what changes that they've made. Think of an app update like on your phone. You know how you have to update it and they say, oh, we've removed bugs or we've fixed this version of the software. Some apps disclose what they've changed or what they've done differently. Now that is not mandated or regulated when it comes to skincare, but Good Molecules chooses to do this. They're actually from San Francisco and <laughs> so am I. I absolutely love them and I do love this discoloration serum, but I want to compare version 1.1 to version 2 to kind of show you how this works in the real world. And you can actually see the difference, which is one of my favorite parts, but let's just start with the packaging, shall we? Good Molecules did release a new version of one of their best-selling discoloration serums. And again, for a lot of people who don't watch this video, they're going to be like, well, why would a brand reformulate? Why would they do that? This is meant to help with dark spots and pigmentation. It's meant to help even out skin tone and it works well. Why would you f with perfection? Well, it's because of consumer feedback. Some consumers didn't like that the active ingredient had a slightly lower percentage or they saw good results, but it took a few weeks to see. Now, if you can increase that active ingredient and speed up the time that a product takes to work without causing additional irritation or redness, you best believe that's one reason that a brand might reformulate. And that's what happened here. Good Molecules is one of the brands that actually listens to their customers and they use customer feedback to make improvements. And in this product, one of the main ingredients is a derivative of tranexamic acid, specifically acetyl tranexamate mesylate, which they've increased by 50%, going from 2% to 3%. They're saying that this has more penetration, that it works better on skin, but it doesn't increase irritation. And they actually took some ingredients out as well. They've removed the butylene glycol and they've also removed the phenoxyethanol. Phenoxyethanol is great. It's a preservative, so it stops mold and bacteria from growing in products. But for some people, it can be very irritating to skin. So in the new version, they actually removed that to make it less irritating. I think a lot of people were probably blaming the active ingredient on that, when in reality, there are a lot of people that get like this redness or this flushing. It's like a 30 second sting when applying products 
that do have phenoxyethanol. And if you are someone who experiences that, check your products for phenoxyethanol and see if it does happen with the products that do have it versus that that doesn't. And when in doubt, always go to a doctor or get an allergy test to work it out. It still contains the same amount of niacinamide at 4%, but something that I noticed with the new formula is that it actually goes on smoother and it absorbs better. Niacinamide, our vitamin B3, is amazing, but it has a tendency to kind of ball up on the skin. There are some sunscreens and some serums that I have with niacinamide as a main ingredient, and they kind of get chalky on the skin. And that's because, you know, usually when formulating niacinamide is this white powder. But this, I don't know if they micronized it or what, it is super silky, and even at 4%, it doesn't gum up or ball up on the skin. Now, when it comes to the actual comparison, I also noticed that the exact same amount of product is in each, but the bottle is slightly smaller. And when you think about it, this one's actually a little bit heavier. I think it has more glass, but that costs a lot of money as well as a lot of carbon emission to ship. The heavier something is, the more carbon emissions it takes. And if you're shipping 20, 30, 50, 100,000 of these, which Good Molecules does because this is just that popular and they sell them that frequently, you can see where that could have a huge environmental impact. So a slightly smaller bottle that's even just more lightweight can really help with that. And you have the exact same amount of product in here, 30 milliliters or one fluid ounce, but it is just a little bit smaller. And I can't really see the difference unless you have them side by side, but I do feel the difference, which is actually nice from an environmental and packaging perspective. Now, the real difference comes when you actually dispense them. The old one soaks in well. I really like it, but it's more of kind of this clear, maybe a little foggy liquid. And as you can see, it's just kind of this kind of translucent grayish texture. The new one is actually much more milky, much more creamy. It's much more pearlescent and it does soak into the skin and absorb better. I find that the old one, it's not greasy by any means, but when I compare them, it just takes a little bit longer to soak in. Whereas with the new one, it goes in almost immediately and it absorbs and dries down without any tacky or greasy feeling. I loved the old formula and I didn't think there was anything wrong with it, but the fact that they were able to find ways to make it better and to make the packaging less environmentally taxing, God, I appreciate that. If you were to blindfold me and ask me what the difference was without looking at it visually, it would be really hard to tell until about a week in when you realize that the new formula works a little bit faster versus the old one. And I wanna make it clear that I've used the old one on my skin, I've tested the new one on my skin, but this isn't a part of my current routine, but I do use these on other people. And those who have used the new formula love it a lot better. The one thing is that the new formula, to my knowledge, isn't found at Ulta. When you go to Ulta, they still have the 1.1. The new one is available online and I live in San Francisco so it gets shipped out to you know clients and people out here really quickly so just keep that in mind and depending on which formula you're looking to get you may want to go online versus in store what do you think about brands reformulating their products have you ever had a brand reformulate something that was so amazing and replace it with something horrible or did you ever try something that was horrible but when reformulated it was literally a holy grail I would love to know and another huge thanks to good molecules for not only making skincare in San Francisco for making it effective and affordable and eco-friendly, but also for working with us on this video to help share skincare education, to help me speak to some of the chemists behind the scenes and really understand some of the secrets in the industry so that we can have transparency, both in our ingredients lists and when it comes to the industry as a whole. Always remember to stay hydrated, both orally and topically. Remember to reapply your SPF and always be beautiful, both inside and out. I love you, beautiful butterflies, and I can't wait to see you in this next video. Love you guys. Bye.